This is my spare thermostat. I need it so I can show you something. Hopefully, someone will learn something from this. Once again, and I want to make a quick, or uh, quickish video talking about differences between the Mishimoto. Um, this is what they refer to it as a racing thermostat. You can see it opens at uh, 180 degrees Fahrenheit versus just an OEM thermostat. Um, the reason I want to make this video is because this actually failed on me. Um, not because it stopped working, but because uh, with it in, the Jeep, especially in our very hot summer temperatures, just under normal driving would get pretty hot. I mean, not um, not overheating, but of course, 4.7 liter is known for aluminum parts and uh, not overheating, but concerning temperatures. I was hitting like 130 plus degrees going uphill, which is generally considered to be unacceptable, especially for a vehicle with no load on it. You know, there's no, it's not towing anything. There's nothing in it. It's, it's an empty vehicle with one uh, one person in it. It shouldn't really have that much of an issue um, going over hills and things. Um, especially given the fact that previously it did not have those issues. Now, um, 180 degrees versus 195 degrees. I think that's the first big difference, especially when you're reading about them uh, between the two. So this one also claims to be a high flow thermostat. There's a couple of different uh, differences cosmetically that you can see, differences in design. Um, the, the biggest of which I would say is that the Mishimoto has this sort of tail on it. Um, that brings the total size between the two. This one is 1.652 inches tall or 41.97 millimeters tall. This one is a staggering 2.2995 inches tall versus 58.41 millimeters. You know, or 58.41 millimeters. You, you know what I'm saying there. <laughs> um, the question that I had is if it is a high flow thermostat and it's opening uh, sooner than the OEM one, I mean, 180 is still within tolerance for the 47. The, the check engine light is not going to come on at 180 degrees. That's well within what the PCM would consider normal. Um, why is it still having such an issue? And one thing you may even see on camera here is that the aperture size of the thermostats is a little different. The Mishi motor actually has a smaller aperture on it than the OEM. I mean, it's not a huge difference, but it is enough that you kind of go, huh. Um, the Mishimoto comes in at 25.97 millimeters, or 1.0225 inches. In the actual opening, the aperture that the coolant can get through. And the OEM comes in at 29.61 um, millimeters, or 1.660 inches. So that's not a huge difference. But you can definitely throw the high flow in the advertisement out the window right right away. Um, now, I want to note that I am making this video kind of disappointed. Because I was, especially for the price you pay for this, you would expect it to do what it says. Um, I'm, not, I'm not one of those guys who really slams something and just throws it in the garbage. Mishimoto, if you watch this, I want to see your product improve. I, I like a lot of your other products. Um, your oil coolers are very nice and very high quality, it looks like. Um, and things like that, you know, I, I don't want to see, I, I want to see everyone improve, you know. If you just make a video and you're negative about it and you throw the product away, then nobody wins. So, now I, what I'm going to do is the classic boil test. We're going to um, boil these two and see how far they open and see if maybe the hat trick that the Mishimoto plays is that maybe it opens further, which I'm kind of doubting based on how it was before, but then again, maybe, maybe it does. Another issue that I had when I pulled this out of the Jeep, you can see as of right now, everything's lined up. If you look, if I can get my camera to focus, good Lord. Um, you see the inside of the thermostat where there's a small pin right in there. Um, that had actually come out, and the entire 
internal apparatus of the thermostat was kind of sitting in a cattywampus state. Like so. This is actually how it was. I just kind of pressed it to show you what it looked like. So as you can see, it was not closed all the way. This is how it came out of the Jeep, actually. Which is not... Uh, it's kind of troubling. You know, it's kind of unsettling the fact that I paid this much for a thermostat and it didn't actually work properly. But uh, the nice thing is Mishimoto offers a lifetime warranty on these, which is kind of surprising for a thermostat. Um, but given the cost, it's probably well warranted. Now, I want to note both of these thermostats are used. I didn't feel it was appropriate to put a used thermostat up against a new one. I wanted to show how, the how like, for example, the gaskets on both of these are kind of deformed a little bit. You can tell that they've actually been in the thermostat housing. Um, this one's got a little bit of corrosion on there, as you can see. But, uh, you know, they're both in good shape. They're, this one, I know for a fact, is still functional. So... In fact, I keep this one as my uh, my spare. So let's go ahead and boil them and see how they both behave. Maybe this one opens a little bit further. Um, I don't know. Let's let's find out. On the stove here. So I will come back. I'll report back once we hit temperature, and we'll see what they look like. What I'll do is I'll pull. I'll wait until the water reaches about 195 or 200 degrees. And then I'll pull both of them out and we'll take a look at them. Five minutes have passed by. The water's hit about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you notice the Mishimoto here with its long tail has already started to open. So that's kind of curious. That's a little bit too early to be opening like that. So we'll keep watching them and see what happens here. 176 degrees. And you can really start to see that Mishimoto thermostat's really started to open up. So that's actually a good sign. Um, the OEM has not done anything, which it's not supposed to until 195. So the next stop will be one about 200. I'll come back and we'll report in and see where they're both at. Boil here of 200 degrees. Of course, there's no coolant in it, so it's going to boil. Um, one thing you'll notice is that it is kind of difficult to see the Mishimoto thermostat is fully open. You will notice that the probe is actually sticking, that, that tail end of it is actually sticking out of the water now, which is kind of a problem because of how long it is and uh, how little space there is in the actual engine in the thermostat housing. Because that sticks back. Our OEM has just barely started to open, and I think I should probably um, watch this water a little bit because we're getting pretty close to boiling over. <laughs> Alrighty. Alright, so we are at 210, which is nominal operating temperature of the Jeep, 210 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to go ahead and use a pair of tongs here and pull each out, and we'll take a look at how far they've opened. So here we've got the OEM, and you can see just a peep. It is open though, and it is actually starting to close already because I pulled it out of the hot water. And then our Mishimoto is all the way open. So, um, that's actually a good sign. It's a functional thermostat, it would appear. It's just, uh, it's got another flaw, which I'll talk about in a minute. I'm going to let this get to about 250 and see if this guy opens up any further or what the deal is. Because I can already tell you what the issue with the Mishimoto thermostat is. I'll get to that in just a second. 30 degrees, which is above nominal by 20 degrees. You can see that the OEM has opened up a little bit more. The Mishimoto, of course, isn't going to open any further because it's all the way open. I mean, there's nowhere else for that thing to go. So you can see that is opening quite a bit. Um, so why isn't it working? This is the point of failure on the Mishimoto thermostat. If it obviously opens much further than an OEM thermostat, um, the, the answer is actually this tail. Um, this tail is actually so long that even though the thermostat is capable of opening much, much further than an OEM thermostat, it can't because this tail actually contacts the back of the, uh, of the engine, basically. Or the, uh, that would actually be the timing chain cover that this sits in. So in the front here you have your 
um, thermostat housing, which is the two bolts that you, of course, uh, your lower radiator hose and the two bolts that hold it on go on right there. Um, so the answer is not actually the aperture, which was my expectation. Um, the answer is this tail. As you can see, once again, it has not fit back into place properly. So I'm going to see if I can do it one-handed here and get this to pop back in. So what are the differences? What would I do differently? Um, Mishimoto, what I would recommend... I'm no engineer by any means. You can see I popped it back together here. Um, my recommendation, I've got really two major ones. The first one is get rid of this tail. That's your biggest uh, downfall in this particular test. Um, because this tail is so long, even though it is a very nice thermostat, it opens very wide, and it technically can be considered a high-flow thermostat, this tail is so long that it doesn't properly fit to let that thermostat open all the way. Another thing I would do is I would drill this hole out and extend this rod just a little bit further out so that uh, you don't get that weird cattywampus issue that I was just showing off. Um, if you do want to make the aperture larger, you could even go as far as uh, um, building this into a thermostat housing so that all of this section here can be built into the thermostat housing. You could have the aperture a little bit larger, you know, that sort of thing. But ultimately, if you could actually get this to work right in the 4.7 liter, that would that would be great. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the full deal there. Um, it's a great idea. Um, it just doesn't work right because of this tail. Um, it doesn't fit properly in the thermostat housing. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully someone at Mishimoto sees this so that it can be fixed. And I noticed that I'm not actually the first person to have this issue. If you go on Amazon and you look this part number up or you go and you search it, um, there are a lot of people who have had this issue. So, uh, guys, you guys seem to know a lot about cooling. Uh, you've got a, a couple of great cooling products. Uh, maybe someday this will be up to spec so I can put another one in the Jeep. You know, I've got this fancy radiator and everything else in my cooling system has been in some way, shape, or form upgraded. But for the time being, I can't run this and I can't really recommend it until the problems on it are fixed. So, you know, it's one of those things. I don't want to badmouth the company and I don't want to say, Oh, they're running suck because they don't. Um... That just needs to be changed. That design needs to be changed. And then, yeah, that'll be ready for, for use in the big time. Uh, you see this one, I actually measured both of these. I, I should note that. I measured the total extended length of both of these. So when hot, this one reached a staggering 71.96 millimeters or 2.833 inches. This one reached a total of 42.44 millimeters or 1.67 inches. That's a difference of one millimeter on this one. This one, it's a difference of, let's see, 20 almost, a full 20. Um, you go, well, pretty close. You know, my math is probably a little off there. I'll put the, I'll put everything on screen here. But this one closed as 2.2995 inches. And open, it's 2.833 inches, or 58.41 millimeters and 71.96 millimeters, respectively. So, guys, there's your issue. If you could fix it, that would be great, because I'd like to. I like the idea of this, and I'd like to run it. Um, it just has to work right. So, <laughs> get on it. <laughs> um, otherwise, hope you guys have a great day. Um, this has been my video. Uh, I hope uh, this actually leads to some sort of improvement. I don't want to rant about something and, you know, just, you know, like I said before, it's not really productive to say, hey, this sucks, this doesn't work, and then, you know, go on your merry way. If something's wrong, I want to see it fixed. So you know, I want to see everyone win here. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a good day. See you later.